Hello and welcome to SprueCam Tutorials brought to you by SprueCam America. This is beginning tutorial number two. In this tutorial I'm going to explain how to import and orient a solid model correctly for machining. So the first thing we're going to do is tell SprueCam where to look for our solid models from this point on. So we're going to go to the Tools menu and click on System Setup. And in the first folder, you will see this tab that says um, Project, Import Files, CNC Programs, Post Processor. This is where all those different things are found. So right now, it wants to look on the desktop in a folder called Tutorial Parts. That's exactly want, where I want it to look. If I wanted to change that, I would hit the little three dot button here and change where I want it to look. But right now, oop, let's go back, pick tutorial parts. Okay, so now we got it right. We can also set our parameters for automatic project save. So we can put auto save on, we can put interval of every um, five minutes. Let's see. Move that down to five minutes, and we'll take a detailed um, save. That means it will save the simulation result. <coughs> so we will click OK. Now we're going to go to File and Import and see it looked in the file tutorial parts and we will double click new tutorial part IGES and that'll load up when it's ready we'll click OK and this is the, the new tutorial part um, most of the beginning tutorials will revolve around the first side. Um, we get into a little bit more of the advanced uh, or at least um, the later beginning videos will get to the back side. So <coughs> this is the part we're going to be working on. Now I want you to look at these crosshairs and if you look down here in it more of an explanation of what the crosshairs does Z is up and down, Y is in and out, X is left and right. Those are the axes of your machine. If we bring a machine up in here, right now we have a Herco machine selected. You can see, um, and we can actually move this machine around a little bit. Let's turn the machine on in the machining tab and the z-axis position we can move up or down y-axis in and out x-axis left and right I will turn the um, machine off for right now and focus back <coughs> on our part now what we want to do is establish where our origin is. That's where all these parts meet, the zero, zero, zero point. Um, right now, it is in the, the center of this part is where I drew it. It'll depend uh, very heavily on how you drew the part in your CAD system. But I want to move this origin over to this corner, to the back left corner. So I'm going to go over and click on Part in the File Tree and then click on new tutorial part and when you see it highlight in blue that means it's active and now we will go to transform now in the transform functions you can do an awful lot of things you can locate your zero which is what we're going to do right now and when I click locate, locate zero you'll see this rectangular box is a representation of your part so right now it's in the center we want to move it over to the left, so we're going to put it in Y axis maximum, 
x axis minimum and z axis maximum. So that'll be at the very top of our part. We'll click apply. Let's boot cam do its thing. And now you can see it is in uh, the correct orientation that we want. And Z is right up at the top, the maximum material condition for this um, particular part. Now let's say we want to rotate this part. Say we don't want to machine it this way, we want to machine it in the long axis of Y. We can do that too. We can rotate it. And we want to rotate it. Let's uh, look at it in the top view. We want to rotate it around this point right here. So around the, z the Z axis. So we're going to put around Z axis. And we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. And you can see that ghost image comes over there. So we're going to apply. And it should just show up there. And we'll click OK. So now we have set our origin. And we have rotated our part. Other things you can do in transform, you can move your part. Let's say we want to move it in X one inch. So we'll click Apply. And now it moves over in X one inch. What if we wanted to make copies? We can do that. We can make a copy, move it in X, let's say, four inches. You can see the copy will be right here. We can make two copies if we want. Click Apply. And now we have two copies. Click OK. Now one thing you must understand, when you make copies, um, when you first import a model, Sprucam automatically sews faces. That means it automatically finds all the edges and points. If you make a copy of that, it is not going to automatically find those things. So let's go to the machining tab to explain what I'm talking about. We'll go to machining tab and we're going to click on our edge feature recognition. Now, when we zoom in, you can see I can pick edges. Edge here, edge here, edge here. Now if I go over to this model, I cannot do the same thing. That is because faces have not been sewn on the, on the copies. So you have to go back to the model tab, then hold down control and click these two models, and then click Sew Faces. Now you see all the points and edges come up. We'll click OK. Now if we go back to the machining tab, we can pick edges here, edge here, edge here, edge here. Everything works fine. All right. Now lastly, what we want to do is define our workpiece. That is the stock that is um, that we are going to machine in order for our part to appear out of that stock. Okay. So let, well, let's get rid of these copies. So we'll go to the Model tab, and we will highlight these guys here and delete them. Yeah, we don't need those right now. So we want to create our workpiece. When we go to the Machining tab, you will see this box is automatically generated. Let's change the color of this box so it's a little easier for you to see. We will right click on our workpiece visibility tab and we will select, we'll turn transparent off. Now you can see that. And we can select a color. Let's select orange. So that is what our stock workpiece will look like. We can put it back on transparent, kind of get an idea. All right. <coughs> 
Now that's like a default value that's generated. And what we want to do is make it real. So we're going to go, while we're in the machining tab, is go to our workpiece icon. Now we're going to pick primitive. And we want it to make a box around the part. That is the default value, is box around part. And click Add. Now when we clicked Add, this icon shows up. This is representing this workpiece. If we want to change values of the workpiece, we double click on box around part, and you can add or remove stock. So let us look at the end view here. I'm going to add a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to double click this. I'm going to put in 0.25 in the stock box, but I don't want to put it in um, Y. So I'm going to take it out of Y, and then I'm going to click OK. Now you can see that that box got a lot bigger all of a sudden. And that's what you'll need to do. It did not happen in Y. That's what you will need to do um, if you need to define your workpiece. The closer you can actually define the stock workpiece that you will be working with, the better off your results will be. There are other ways of defining a workpiece. If we delete this one, well, we can just unselect it so it won't be active. And we can go to, well, let's just delete it. We'll clear it. We can go to 2D geometry. Now, if we go to our top view, and let's say we got a big circular plate that we're going to make this out of, we are going to create a circle. We'll line it up right there. We'll pull the circle out like that. Good enough. We'll go to our machining tab. Now we want to create this stock right here. So we're going to click Extrude and we're going to pick that circle. All right, and our top level is going to be zero, and our bottom level is going to be minus two, let's say. We'll add that. Now, SprueCam has extruded that circle to become our stock. All right, we've gone over our orientation of our part and creation of our workpiece. There is also a box here that is called material in which you can select what type of material you're using, kind of hardness, what type of machining condition it takes. And you can select things from tables. Just so you know where that's at. All right, so this has been um, beginning tutorial two on workpiece orientation and setup. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.